Today, I'm taking you back in time, back in time in the charts and how to use the replay tool of TradingView to your full advantage. There are some unique nuances that you need to make sure you're aware of, but this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I backtest my strategies, how I go back and practice trading in a safe environment. This is going to be a great video if you really want to refine your edge in a safe environment and you can do it at any time. That's the great thing about the replay tool is that you can go back at any point in time and start practicing practicing your strategy, your trading model at any point in time. So let's go ahead and jump into the charts. So here we are on TradingView and we're going to be using the replay tool as you can see right here. But before we do, I need you to understand something. If you were to zoom and zoom out and go as far left as you can, you're going to find out that at some point you're going to hit a roadblock. You can't go any further because it stops. You've hit your limit of the number of candles that it will populate. If you simply select the replay mode right here, it's going to give you this blue line and it's going to allow you to go back in time to specific points. But as you can see, I can't go any further back. But when I select right here, watch what happens. Boom. It just populated more. Every time you go back in time, you can go further back in time even more. So right here we are on January 5th. If I was to go down here to the select the bar tool, if I select that and I go back in time right here, we're on January 5th. You can see that it populates more. Now I'm on January 3rd and I can go all the way back. And the way I actually go about doing this is I go back to a specific period of time that I want to go to. And let's go ahead and select right here. And then what I do is I put these vertical bars. These vertical bars keep track of where I'm at in my back testing. As you can see right here, this vertical line represents 930. This one here represents 10 a.m., 11, and it goes every hour on the hour. We got 12, 1, 2, 3, and then the last one goes to 415. Now 415 is very important because 415 is the close of the regular trading hour session. So if I want to look at a daily chart, I do not want to go to 416. If I go to 416, I'm going to be looking at the t at tomorrow's full candle. Right now we're going to go and back test December 4th. But as we can see right here, when you are at 4.15 or earlier, it's going to show you that full candle for December 3rd. If I was to go to 4.16, it will now, it would show me December 4th, December 4th. I don't want to see that candle because that's the candle I'm going to start cutting my teeth and refining my edge on. If I want to look at a higher time frame, the daily candle, this is how you do it. You go to the end of the day that you finished back testing and you're going to then try to start predicting what the next candle could look like. So once I identify what my daily candle is looking at like, I cannot go back to this candle once I start moving forward in time. And to move forward in time, you're going to select these play buttons right here. Forward, it automatically goes, or you can go one candle at a time. So I'm going to be going all the way to 929. I want to print that candle. I want to get the last candle before we get the market open candle. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and I'm going to mark all the key levels that are important to me. So we are going to mark our London low we have right here. We're going to mark our Asia low we have right here. And then the last one that we need to put on here is from 415. 415 to 930 is going to determine what our opening range gap is. And I use the opening range gap in my trading quite frequently. There we go. So what I've just described to you and shared with you so far is your prep to your back testing. This is what I do every single day. Now, whether you have other indicators, which you can add your indicators right here to see how they would perform on the day, it doesn't matter. You can do that here in a safe environment and now you can test out your strategies. I have three strategies I trade. I have a 930 model, I have a breaker, and an inversion fair value gap. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my grading tool, which is how I determine if a trade is something I want to take, which it determines if it's an A plus, 
A minus, B, B minus. You can determine that your own. I made a whole video on that right here. You can check that out so you can make your own A plus trading model and then you can back test it in the replay mode on TradingView. Here we are here. Let's take a look and see what we got going on. I do already know that we are at all time highs. So this is at all time highs and we've already seen one of my models play out. We have a we have a high, low, higher high. Price breaks, displaces lower, and then it retraced right here. Boom. That is a breaker. Now that's before the market opened, but as you can see, it's beginning to play out and it's selling off. So I'm looking at this determining, all right, my 930 model, does this fall in line with everything that I want to accomplish with my 930 model? And the answer is yes, I like what the way it's looking. So I'm going to go ahead and execute on my 930 model. So I'm going to go ahead and sell here. I'm going to target 10 handles because that's part of my requirement is to target for just 10 handles for my 930 model and there's my entry and I don't set a stop loss for this particular model. The next thing I do is now I go on to the next candle. I'm just going to push one forward to see if my it, it played out for me. In this case, there it is. It played out. Now we're looking at the candles here. Okay. Trading model number one, 930 model, done. It's all good. Now I'm looking for my breaker and I'm looking for my inversion model and the criteria that I want to use when I'm making those trades. Now, as I said before, when I'm talking about grading those trades in that video, how to grade your trades, I actually talk about some of the characteristics I'm looking for, for my breaker and my inversion model. So as I'm looking at this right here, I already know we have a lot of liquidity down here. We have midnight open. We have our London low sitting way over here. We have the Asia low sitting here. I like the idea of us trying to play a, a trade lower. So I need to determine, do I see the criteria for my breaker or for an inversion? One of my big requirements is a sweep of liquidity. But because we're at all time highs, I don't have any large higher time frame sweeps of liquidity. The only liquidity that I'm going to have swept is this candle right here. So you can see that the candle swept higher and moved lower, which was part of that breaker. Well, I like this structure so far. And the one level that's standing out to me the most is this candle right here. I like this large candle at 841. It was a big displacement lower and then it went right back up moving higher and it's overlapping a fair value gap right here. So if I go ahead and I'm going to mark this as my breaker, I, I kind of like that. So we're going to test this out to see. So in my rules, I, if I want to take a breaker, I set my stop loss at either 10, 15 or 20 handles. So I'm going to go ahead. I like this. I like these equal lows sitting right here as my draw on liquidity, my easy target. So we're going to make those um, equal lows. And then if I, if it's really, if this bad boy really gets going, then we may target the London low or the Asia low. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. I'm going to take two contracts like I did before, and we're going to go short right at this breaker. So I'm going to hit the sell button here and now I'm in a trade. So I'm going to set my stop loss at 15 handles. So 21, that makes it 36 would be my stop loss. All right. So there's going to be my stop loss right there. That my risk on this trade would be $600. And my target is going to be the midpoint of this opening range gap. I typically like to target the center of these opening range gaps as my easy draw on liquidity, but I will keep an eye out on these equal lows to see how we respond after we close below them. Okay. So let's go ahead and see how this plays out. Let's go ahead and click the next candle. And it's as simple as that. Nice. Okay. So it had a large displacement lower. I really like the displacement of this. I don't think I want to sell anything yet. Let's see what happens here in the next candle. If we are looking for our next potential area that it could retrace, we have a swing low here and we have a swing low here. So let's go ahead 
and um, click forward. But at the same time, I want to figure out when do I want to move my stop to break even? Am I comfortable with this stop? Let's go ahead and move one more and let's see what this looks like. Okay, so we've retraced. I want to see if this wants to act as an order block. Does this want to act as an order block here? Okay, so now we're in drawdown. We have another breaker right here. So this grabs my attention. We have a breaker sitting right here and we have this order block sitting right here. So I think I want to move my stop loss a hair bit higher and I'm going to move it right. So we have this, we have this inversion fair value gap right here. I like this inversion. See how it's overlapping with that wick right there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put that here and I'm going to put my stop loss just above the midpoint of this inversion fair value gap. Let's see if that right there, that's, I think that's where I want to put it. Let's see how that see how that plays out just in case we want to reach up for this breaker because I did get in a little early based on this breaker but we could reach up to this breaker so let's let's just see how this plays out here okay great look at that see how we came up to that breaker and then we displace lower okay so I think for me what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my stop to break even as soon as we break below this level right here I think that seems appropriate Let's see if we get uh, nothing there. Okay, so look at this. We have uh, a sweep of liquidity. We break below this, so I'm for sure moving my stop to break even right here. And I think I'm going to take off one contract just in case we want to reverse. I'm not sure if we are going to reverse or not. We're at all, we're close to all time highs, but so far, this is, we're up $833 on both contracts. I'm going to buy one of those contracts back. There we go. That's 20 handles of profit just secured. And now everything else is going to be sitting at break even to see uh, if we are going to continue to play this out. It looks like we might get stopped out. There it is. Okay, so we just got stopped out. And that is what I do every single day. I act as if I'm trading. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here to 10 o'clock because I want to see what the market's going to do around 10 o'clock to see if there's any opportunities for me to get in. Um, nothing here right now. Let's go ahead and play this out. Okay, so we are looking like we're going to push higher. Now the next area of interest that I want to wait for is around because I typically like to trade between the last 15 minutes of the hour and the first 15 minutes of the hour. So we're looking at this time right here. So I'm going to see, I'm going to wait for price to reach about here before I take my next entry because that's just part of my model and my strategies that I would prefer to trade in. So we're going to run all the way to there and we are sitting at 444. So now what I want to do is I want to go back to a higher time frame, but because we're sitting at 444, I can only go up to the 15 minute time frame. So let's take a look at the 15 minute time frame and see if we have any anything that gives us a clue on what the market may be doing. I think the only thing that draws grabs my attention is this right here. This right here could potentially be a bullish breaker. So I'm just going to mark that on the 15 minute time frame drop back down to the one minute and see if there's any opportunities that come up from here. Maybe if it wants to come back down here and then maybe push higher within this gray box time frame, that may be of interest to me. Let's see what happens. Okay, so we wicked into this fair value gap already. There's the fair value gap and look how we respected the consequent encroachment, the middle of that fair value gap. That's of real interest to me. So let's see if we get any other push lower here. I like this. I'm just not quite ready for me to take a long. If I'm going to take a long, I want to see it hit the breaker and then bounce from there. Let's see if we got anything more. Oh man, that's respecting that quite a bit. I think I'm going to take a long. I think I'm going to try a one long here. I like the way it looks. I'm going to set my stop loss. Let's see, 64 to 50. We're sitting right down here. The only thing I don't like 
is that we could still wick down into this level and move higher, but overall I like the way it's looking. Let's see how it plays out here. Oh, nice. Okay, so we are moving. I'm, I'm going to be a little more nimble on this. Here's our inversion that we just played off of. We broke through. I'm going to set a target for this high right here and see if we can sweep those equal highs. And because we've already swept this internal high, I'm going to move my stop to break even just to protect my position. I want to treat this like a real account. Okay, so let's go on to the next candle. Oh, man. Almost. There it is. Okay. As as the day plays out, let's jump to the 15 minute time frame. When I'm done on the day, what I'm doing is I go and I'll leave these vertical lines here because these vertical lines will tell me where I'm at in my back testing. I want to keep track of that as much as possible. So if I want to, if I'm ready to go to the next day, I'm just going to play this forward until I get to the end of the day, as you can see right here, and I don't want to go past 4.15. So this is at 4 p.m. So now what I can do is I can go to the daily time frame and I can get my daily bias for the next day's worth of trading. But that right there is how I backtest my own strategy every single day. And guys, the fastest way to profitability is backtesting. The fastest way to seeing success in your trading is to go back and try your tra strategy over and over and over, refining your skills in a safe environment. This allows you to do that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It, this replay bar has helped me tremendously in refining my skills and I hope it does for you. If you like videos like this, consider liking, subscribing. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you in the next video. Take care.